Well, time has flown, but it's one month ago today that Watford's promotion party broke out on their team bus. Bournemouth followed them a couple of days later in memorable style in that unforgettable night at Dean Court. Today, well, it's the turn of the best of the rest down there in the Wembley Tunnel. Third place Norwich taking on fourth place Middlesbrough on an afternoon that has become one of the highlights of the football calendar. But as the old saying goes, there can be only one, and what a way, what a day this is to decide who it will be who will take that final place in the Barclays Premier League. The longest nine days in the careers of many of these players, Andy, between the semi-final success and building up to this showpiece occasion. Well, it's been a long, long way. All the preparation has been done. It is really now just about controlling the nerves. The managers will have their game plans. The players will know their roles, but it's just whether you can control the nerves. I was lucky enough to play in an FA Cup final, play for England here at Wembley, and the nerves, you really do have to get on top of them. Sometimes you block the crowd out, that's what I did. Sometimes you feed off the crowd. We interesting to see which set of players settle quickest. yellow and green for this, the blue ribboned event of the Football League calendar. The first visit to the rebuilt Wembley for these two clubs, the first taste of an atmosphere and an occasion like this for most of these players and indeed for both of the managers. Middlesbrough, incidentally, emerging from the England dressing room. If you're superstitious, South End, the winners of the Skybet League Two playoffs, Preston, who won yesterday, both staged parties in there over the weekend after their wins. The Middlesbrough have their Wembley memories of. Uh, Defeat after defeat to Chelsea, going back all the way to the Zenith Data Systems Cup. They did draw here in the League Cup final against Leicester City, but have never won here. Norwich City have that one success here back in the Milk Cup, as it was then, in 1985. But not many under the age of 35 will have much memory of that. Time for the presentations. Led by Craig Clark, the chairman of the Football League, along with him is the chief executive officer of, officer rather, of Sky Betting and Gaming, that's Richard Flint, and Errol McKellar, the ambassador of the Football League's charity, Prostate Cancer UK. On an occasion like this, when there's precious little on paper, really, between the two sides, you look, perhaps, Andy, at differences in approach. Norwich City and Alex Neal determined to play it as regularly as possible, if you like. They trained up at their Colney training base just outside the city of Norwich. They travelled down yesterday, stayed locally. Very much the message from the manager. Of course, this isn't just another game, but let's try and treat it as much as we can like one. Yeah, I think Alex Neal, that's, that's understandable. It's had such a huge effect on this squad, a talented squad. He just kept it very simple. Let's do the things we do for a regular league game, but this is anything but... Again, it's about controlling those nerves and putting the game plan into operation. Well, I took Aranka, adopting a slightly different approach with his middles per side. This isn't another game, this is a final. We need to approach it differently. They've been down, staying just outside London since Friday. They came to the League Two playoff final here on Saturday. And for all that preparation, they were caught in traffic on the way here and a half an hour late. Well, I talk around, he knows his side are good enough players like Bamford and Adoma, Voss and Tomlin, they can win the game for his team. But psychologically, it's so important you get it right. You do whatever is necessary to get to the Premier League. Before we get underway, we will have the national anthem.
Looking relaxed, aren't they, the Middlesbrough players, as they wave to friends and family. Mike Dean, Premier League referee, in charge here. Well, let's show you how they'll line up. There's one change to the Middlesbrough side that saw off Brentford so impressively in the second leg of that semi-final up at the Riverside. Top scorer Patrick Bamford is fit after an ankle injury, and he's back to lead the line. Behind him remains that effective blend of the pacey Albert Adoma, Belgian international Jelle Bossen and the creative Lee Tomlin. Their success this season very much built, though, on the strong defence, which includes Dean Whitehead, who continues at right back, as he did in both legs of their semi-final. With a fully fit squad to choose from, Alex Neal does have options, but he elects to go with the same side that started their second leg home win against Ipswich nine days ago. So Wes Houlihan plays behind top scorer Cameron Jerome, who rediscovered his goal touch in that second leg. Much is made of Norwich's comparative Premier League experience. Well, eight of this side played in their final Premier League match as they were relegated 12 months ago. A couple of academy products on the Middlesbrough bench, Connor Ripley and Adam Reach, and Middlesbrough-born Jonathan Woodgate, who could play for his club for the final time today. Lewis Graben back from a ban, and among the Norwich substitutes, along with the striking options, Gary Hooper adds to those. Now well, take a cup final. At nine months' hard grind, a place in the Premier League for a winner's. Had finances to make the eyes water, throw it all into one, and this is what we've got, the Sky Bet Championship playoff final. It's coming up next. Delicious contrast in terms of the approach of the two sides and indeed the two managers. Ida Karanka, who as a player has an impeccable record, Champions League winner with Real Madrid, Spanish international, but comparatively young in his uh, managerial terms, assistant of Jose Mourinho, and certainly with uh, the ear of the manager of the Champions, it would appear in the way that he sets up his side. Alongside him, though, very much uh, northeastern experience in the form of Steve Agnew. Alex Neal, who at the start of 2015 was unknown to most of the people who come here today in the colours of Norwich to cheer him on. Manager of Hamilton, up in Scotland. Guided them to the uh, Scottish top flight 12 months ago. Can he do the same here for Norwich City? as they look to bounce back immediately. And Middlesbrough look to end what has been a very long six years for them away from the top division. In terms of the Skybet Championship season, it was Middlesbrough dominance, an aggregate score over the two league fixtures of 5-0. So we have two clubs with strong Premier League passes today in front of the best part of 90,000 people here at Wembley. They play for a Premier League future. Giant roar as Norwich get us underway. Tati, who will play such an important role for Norwich just in front of his back four. From the Doma, here's Bamford. Bossen's on the charge. Tetty stealing it away from Bamford. Now Housen. Cameron Jerome. Houlihan, the fulcrum of so much that is creative about Norwich. In by Olsen. Well, you mentioned Alex Tetty there as the holding midfielder, and his positioning allows the two Norwich fullbacks to push on. Whitaker down the right and Olsen down the left. We've just seen that Martin Olsen pushing in 
Providing the width and, and delivering into the box, that's important, get out of your feet and deliver. Bradley Johnson. Well, I mentioned before, Andy, the two league meetings, I think we can ignore the one before Alex Neil took over as Norwich manager, Norwich weren't quite themselves as they are now. The one, though, last month we can read a lot into. Middlesbrough started strongly at Carrow Road, got that early goal, then held on. You wouldn't be surprised to see a similar approach from Ida Karanka here. Absolutely, I'm sure Anton Karanka would take that a 1-0 win in place in the Premier League. But you're right, Alex Neil, I'm sure, would have spoken to his team about not giving anything away. Really, at any point, you don't want to get behind against Middlesbrough. They are really adept at setting their stall out, making life very hard for you. They're hard to break down. That's why it's vital for Norwich to get Wes Houlihan on the ball. He's the key player. He can make things happen if he can get some space to work in. Speaking of making things happen, here's Middlesbrough's Lee Tomlin. Clayton. It wasn't so very long ago that these two were eyeing up the automatic promotion spots just about this time last month. Middlesbrough top of the pile fell away for them and they lost an extraordinary 4-3 game at Fulham. Dimi Constantopoulos, the goalkeeper, sent up and uh, they were picked off, ended up losing. Norwich's automatic promotion hopes pretty much finished off by a home defeat by their opponents today in red, Middlesbrough. Redman. Johnson's there, just too high for him. Olsen. Well, Bradley Johnson's a great header of the ball, but really the cross didn't help him, too much flight on it. He needed to be whipped in so he can come and attack it. Whitehead. Ledbetter. Gibson. He's picked out of going now. Beautifully. Bamford makes his run. They're picked out there by uh, Albert Adoma. Well, Adoma needs to do more there. He's isolated against Olsen. He's right on the edge of the penalty area. Take him on, force him to make a challenge in the box. That's his cross away this time. Hopped on his way by Whitaker. Redmond. He really came to the fore, didn't he? Particularly in the second half of uh, that second leg of the East Anglian semi final. And what we're seeing from both sides, they've got plenty of attacking midfielders who get up and support the lone strikers. So Cameron Jerome, Patrick Bamford, absolutely vital. When the ball goes into those lone strikers, they hold the ball up and bring those key midfielders into the game. And there's a slight question mark over the Championship Player of the Year. Patrick Bamford has hardly trained since he picked up ankle ligament injury in the win at uh, Carrow Road last month. Bradley Johnson in first. Whitehead away, Ledbitter now. Well, this is why Ledbitter and Clayton are so important to Middlesbrough. When the heat is on, they can just take possession of the ball, they take the sting out of the game, and they're patient, they don't rush the ball forward, they're always looking to take the ball as they're doing here and just keep it moving. I just mentioned Patrick Bamford there, I'm sure Sebastian Bassong, Russell Martin, but they get the opportunity to get close to Bamford and maybe leave a little bit on him, just see how fit he is. Centre halves at times do that with centre forwards, just test out how fit the striker is. There has to be an element of calculated risk from Aita Karanka, who doesn't really strike you as a massive gambler of a manager. to the Riverside 18 months ago and he set about putting a rigidity into the side and had clean sheet after clean sheet and in the last 12 months they've added more, a lot more some clever loan signings, getting the best out of some of the crop he inherited it's going to blend it is a uh, of optimism for Teesside in a way that it hasn't been seen since Brian Robson last took them up into the Premier League all those years ago yeah, Middlesbrough do defend well, but they're not a defensive side, they don't play to win 1-0, they've got lots of good uh, counter-attacking players, plenty of width. And that's where you start, you start with foundations, don't give a lot of goals away, and with attacking players like Adoma and Bamford, they'll go on and win the match for you.
Gibson, who was a little bit of a doubt ahead of this match, uh, had a bout of tonsillitis in the week, and that's uh, cleared up, enabling the homegrown lad, the nephew of the chairman, Steve Gibson, to take his place at the heart of that miserly defence. Pressure on. And Norwich a throw as well. Whitaker. Jerome was offside, didn't contend the ball. Well, it's not going to be easy for Norwich to put pressure on that Middlesbrough back four playing with that lone striker unless they ask some of their midfielders to push on. It's going to be fairly comfortable possession for the two at full backs and the two centre halves, and Middlesbrough will be patient, play out from the back. Whitaker, good run from Bradley Johnson. Well, Dean Whitehead does absolutely brilliantly here. He knows he's probably not going to have to head the ball, but he just gets his body in the way. He sees the run of Bradley Johnson, who runs from deep. The right back just steps across there, steps across his line. And there's no way Johnson's going to reach it. It's the first time since January that Dean Whitehead has started three games in a row on loan. Tottenham defender Ryan Fredericks has been. Uh, among those who've been preferred to him, Thomas Callas, who uh, was on loan from Chelsea, and his loan expired at the end of the regular season, also that. Well, uh, not really troubling John Ruddy and Norwich with that. Well, Yellow Boston's just having a shout at Albert Adoma, saying, don't try and whip that ball in towards Bamford. He dropped Boston to the edge of the penalty area, try and pick him out. Cameron Gerrard. Devoured the ground there, didn't need to beat Ben Gibson to it. Whitaker, Jerome. Norwich playing their way out of a tight situation. Tetty. Houlihan. Jerome! Centimetres away, Johnson! Oh, he's clattered the crossbar! First significant moment with nine minutes on the clock here. Well, Cameron Jerome should be burying this, it's a wonderful strike from Johnson, but Jerome, in between defenders, at the very least, should get contact with the cross. Now here come Middlesbrough, Bamford the lone raider at the moment. Needs to be the perfect ball to pick him out, it found Basson. Here's Basson! He's hit the crossbar! Well, we've had a quite extraordinary opening, what, nine and a half minutes, not the opening to the game I expected at all. Two wonderful strikes, the crossbars are still shaking. But this is what Norwich are very good at, they get the ball into wide areas and then they deliver. But Cameron Jerome, in between defenders, should do better. Wonderful strike here from Johnson. So, so unlucky, adjusts his body so quickly, he's got a wonderful left foot. That is all about technique, and he's a whisker away. And then straight down the other end, again, great technique from Vossen. John Ruddy, nowhere near it, six inches lower, and that's 1-0 Borough, what a start to the game. Anything you can do? Bradley Johnson. Norwich City's player of the year, and there have been a few contenders. Well, you can see the way that Norwich play, Nathan Redmond will provide real width on that right-hand side, but Bradley Johnson can play wide on the left, but he will drift in field. We've seen it a couple of occasions making runs inside the right-back or, or joining up with attacks as the ball breaks, and that's why he's been so effective this season, that's why he scored 15 goals. Bradley Johnson hit the Middlesbrough crossbar. 32 seconds later, Vossen repaid the favour. And so often it's irrelevant to look at form and uh, such like coming into a one-off cup final, which this effectively is. But one thing that's uh, it's very hard to escape is the effectiveness of Middlesbrough when they do score first. Just one defeat all season. And that's happened. Cameron Jerome has rubbed Ayala here. 
Still Cameron Jerome! First goal is Norwich's and it's Cameron Jerome! Well, the lone striker role is so, so tough physically. It's so demanding, but as a striker these days, this is what you have to do. You have to close down defenders. He just uses his sheer strength and power. He actually has a look up when he breaks into the penalty area. He's looking for someone to pass to. He's got absolutely no support. I think his teammates are actually surprised he wins this ball back. And I said with Borough, they are patient. They try and play out from the back. They get caught cold here, but there's no one really for Cameron Jerome to pick out. And Constant Topolos, you've got to guard your near post, you can't be beaten so, so easily. You've got to stand up, he's a huge goalkeeper, stay on your feet. He makes that too easy for Jerome, but what a start for Norwich. Well, coming into that second leg of the semi-final against Ipswich, he was enduring his worst ever goal draft for the club. Now he's got two in two. And he has sent... The Raiders from East Anglia into raptures here at Wembley. Well, I bet Cameron Jerome can't believe it as it advances towards Constantopoulos. I bet he's crying out for the goalkeeper, just leave me something at the near post, and he did. Tight, tense, KG, not this one, not at the moment. I was just saying before he scored how important the first goal for Middlesbrough has been over the course of the season. It's something that Norwich have been able to nullify here. Really important part, you feel, of Alex Neal's planning for them. Tetty. Bradley Johnson. Olsen. Just saw Alex Tetty there, just beckoning to Stephen Whittaker, just to take your time, just to slow it down slightly. They've got the opening goal. They maybe just need to get their foot on the ball here and take a bit of the sting out of the game. They're ahead, they don't know, they need to go chasing a second so early. Well, whatever happens at the final outcome here, Cameron Jerome has etched himself into Norwich City football history. Technically, no Norwich player has ever scored a goal at Wembley. You think back to their win in the uh, 1985 Milk Cup final. Asa Harford's shot deflected in off Gordon Chisholm, so an own goal for Sunderland there. No doubt about that one for Cameron Jerome. It's his, and the lead is Norwich's as we approach the quarter of an hour mark. Houlihan. Redman. A crisp efficiency about Norwich just now. That's what a goal does for you. OK, they're going from side to side, but what they're doing is just starving Borough of the ball. When you go behind, you desperately want to get the ball back to have an impact on the game, and Norwich are just denying Borough that. Nice and inviting Whitaker for it. He'll go low and find Redman! It's two! It's a blistering start from Norwich City! Well, you look at the link of play down the right-hand side, Stephen Whittaker and Nathan Redmond. Whittaker provides the width, and Nathan Redmond intelligently comes in field. But the intelligence really in the cross from Whittaker. Doesn't whip it in towards Jerome, he picks out his right-hand side his partner, he just rolls it into his feet, and the first touch from Nathan Redmond is magnificent. And this is one of the goals of the championship season. Just watch Whittaker. He very much picks out Nathan Redmond, and this is unerring. Konstantopoulos, not a chance of stopping it. A Wembley wonder from Nathan Redman. And in their wildest dreams, Norwich City wouldn't have anticipated a start like this. Well, you look at that first touch from Nathan Redman. Not only does he control it, but he controls it away from Ben Gibson. He opens up the angle for himself. It is quite brilliant. His planning has been meticulous. Not the best laid plans and all that. Did it all evaporate in the North London traffic as they struggled to make their way here and were stuck on the coach as Norwich City went through their preparations as they'd hoped. They've certainly been caught cold.
Well, the one major problem Middlesbrough are having is getting Patrick Bamford involved in the game. The quality up to him has, hasn't been good enough. Adoma's seen a bit of the ball, but let's see what happens when you get Cameron Jerome on it. And the trust that they have in him, all the midfield can join in. Bamford's hardly had a touch, so we've hardly seen Tomlin, Vossen and Adoma. They've not been able to get up the field and put pressure on that Norwich back four. Alex Neil will have studied the rare bumps in the road that Middlesbrough have had on their run in this season. He'll have looked at the game they lost down at Bournemouth, the game they lost at Watford. And uh, both those two, already promoted, of course, found a way to nullify their threat. Norwich seem to have uh, taken a leaf out of that book here. Clayton in a little bit strongly there. Mike Dean hasn't had much to do so far, but something for him to think about there. Yeah, he's one of those players, Wes Hulan, when he takes the ball as a, a, an opponent, you've got to try and get close to him, but this is just a tackle of pure frustration. Clayton saying he, he won the ball, he clearly didn't. And the great thing for Alex Neal is a side of tuna look, and we've hardly seen their, their magician, their playmaker, Wes Hulan. Yeah, imagine if he can get involved more heavily. Well, there's something about this guy. Might have been unknown to many before he uh, arrived in English football, but since he's been in charge of Norwich since January, no side in the championship have picked up more points than uh, his Norwich City side. Some might say, well, he's got one of the best squads. Here's Houlihan trying to utilise that with a quick free kick. So very well, having the pieces, you've got to put them in place. Still hungry for another here. Houlihan, seemingly running into a blind alley, but he's found Housen. Whitaker. Houlihan, freezing beyond Ledbetter. Now to deliver. Redmond says, leave it to me. And by Arla, we have a spell on loan at Norwich. Redmond again. Oh, it's hung up so invitingly. That's Konstantopoulos stranded, but Jerome couldn't get that. Well, Norwich are dominating the ball so much that we're seeing players just play really in any position they want to do. Nathan Redmond drifting out to this left-hand side. It all just stems from the fact they keep the ball well. Whitaker's pushing on down the right-hand side, so Redmond can switch flanks and provide width down the left. But at the moment, Borough are just about hanging on. A response. First of all, he needs to just plug the holes. I suppose if you're going to go two down, do it in the first 20 minutes, you give yourself a chance of recovery. But they really need to get their foot on the ball, start popping it around and, and get Bamford heavily involved in the game. It's just simply not happened. Ball some back to front have been poor so far. Bamford trying to get involved. Here's Tomlin. Oh, he's done well here. And now it's back in numbers. Tetty can clear. Well, that is why Alex Tetti is so important to this Norwich side. You look at Houlihan and Housen, Johnson, Redmond, they get all the headlines, but his role, absolutely pivotal. It's a real examination of Middlesbrough, their success this season has been built on, uh, as I say, getting that first goal. And they are breached first, just one win in the 14 games when that has happened, and that was uh, all the way back in August against Bolton into the Macron Stadium. Well, you have to look at things from a psychological point of view for Norwich as well. They probably didn't expect a, a start like this, they're two to the good. 20 minutes gone, surely they can't just sit on this and try and see the job through, they have to continue to push forward. But in a player's mind, well, we're 2-0 up, you don't have to take risks, you start to creep back towards the edge of the penalty area, you really don't want to do that against Middlesbrough. Clayton. Here's Ayala.
Doma. Not going to much change out of Olsen at the moment. That's good play though from Bradley Johnson. He's doubling up with Martin Olsen, so Olsen can get nice and tight, knowing that if he gets beaten, he's always got some help in behind him. That's good work from Johnson. It's a good pairing down this left-hand side for Norwich. George Friend. And he's carved out a corner for Middlesbrough, their first of the afternoon. Well, this is where they can be effective. George Friend himself is a, a big threat aerially. We've got Daniel Ayala, Ben Gibson will come up from the back as well. Bamford's a big lad, so it's all about quality now from Grant Lebitter. Whitaker. Whitehead. Plenty of stayed forward here. Clayton. Needed really a bit more width there than their Middlesbrough. I mean, this can be the problem. I mean, it's such a hurry to get that ball forward, you rush your passes. You've got to be patient and be brave and keep the ball, work it into wide areas, get crosses in, just straight balls like that. If you get them wrong, it's just so easy for Norwich to pick up the ball and then play out again from the back. Whitaker. Houlihan. Johnson. Olsen. Doing well. Clayton. To friend. Not his head up. Just struggling to get a foothold in that key area of central midfield, aren't they? An area which they usually are able to dominate Middlesbrough. Well, yellow Boston's just playing off Patrick Bamford, that is normally the case, but every time Borough come forward, Alex Tetti's realising that and just dropping on top of Boston. Every time the ball has played his way, he's snapping into challenges, he won two tackles there. And again, he wins the ball back for his team, what a job he's doing. Whitaker away. George Frank. Tom. Eludes three. Yellow and green shirt at Norwich City players. Adoma. Ledbitter. A little bit of space here for Friend, but Redmond closes. Friend can get it in. Glanced on by Vossen. Well, that's not an, an easy header for Yellow Vossen. This is his job, really, arriving late at the edge of the penalty area. The whip ball in from George Friend, it's difficult to attack it and get it absolutely right. All the pace is on the ball, you're looking to redirect it, but he's such a long way out. And there's a little bit of Wembley experience and that he was in the Belgian squad, although he didn't play when they uh, played England here in an international. That was back in June 2012. You have to wind the clock back a lot further than that for the last time a side came from two goals down to win a championship playoff final. Bolton, 2-0 down to Reading back in 1995 and went on to prevail. Tetti. Russell Martin. Also, very well to prevent Adoma taking it away. Adoma felt there was uh, some foul play in there. Mike Dean not having any of it. He will give the offside there against Cameron Jerome, though. I think Adoma had a point there. It seemed to me that Olsen was actually sitting on top of the ball, just slipped. And he wasn't going to let Adoma pick possession up on the halfway line and run at his centre halves.
Tati in rather too strongly on uh, Lee Tomlin. Well, this is Alex Tetti's job. I talked about getting close to Yellow Boston. You have to do it with Lee Tomlin when he comes in field as well, invariably. He's going to give free kicks away from time to time. Better to take again. Well, Grant Ledbetter is not happy at all. He's got every right to berate his teammates here. This is a decent ball in. The only thing that's wrong with it is it's not really on target. But it's a wonderful ball and it bounces in the six yard box. Surely the red shirt has got to be attacking that. He's deadly over set pieces, Grant Levitz. I think he's got a right to, to say to his teammates, come on, we've got to close in on top of that. in the space of just under three and a half minutes. I think what will really please Alex Neal, of course, he'd be delighted to be 2 0 up, but very different goals. A centre forward working hard to win the ball back, getting his rewards, and then a wonderful team goal, keeping possession for what 15 20 passes, working it wide, and then a brilliant finish from Nathan Redmond. Faces in the uh, Norwich City director's box. Delight for Delia. There she is, up on the scoreboard. Housen. Back to Whitaker. Redman. Talked about the doubling up, Bradley Johnson working tirelessly back. They know the danger that Adoma poses every time he's in possession. He's got at least two yellow shirts ahead of him. And he's trying to get him behind here. Adoma does well to hook it. Should be Ruddies. Is in the end. Oh, with this type of reach, this should be a fairly comfortable catch. This is what Adoma's got to do mix up his game, get the ball into feet, and then at times run in behind Martin Olsen. Just keeps it alive, and really, John Ruddy should be dealing with this very capably. He just about holds on, there's no foul there. Keeper's a bit lucky. Cameron Jerome sliding in from behind there on uh, Clayton. He was riled, and he, uh, fortunately for him, perhaps just pulled back at Cameron Jerome rather than anything worse. It looked like the red mist had descended for a moment. I'm surprised he's not been booked for that. Normally in a league game, you'd be you'd be booked for that. Again, a sign of frustration, but the hard work of Cameron Jerome. He is so much more than just a goal scorer. He works tirelessly for the team, winning the ball back and drawing fouls like that. Housen. Basson. Tetti. Russell Martin. Ledbitter colliding with George Friend, he's ended up on the deck, Whitaker comes forward. Ayala landing Clayton in it, Houlihan pounces. 
Jerome. Will have been able to keep it alive. Whitaker, take two for Stephen Whitaker. Too high for Johnson, though. Much in the back of Yellow Olsen there by Tetty. Oh, well, for Stephen Whitaker and Martin Olsen, this must be a, a dream side to play in. Tetty's just that defensive insurance. They can push on virtually play as wingers. He's had so much possession in the borough half. Well, in the build-up to this one, he was talking about his big game experience when he was at Rosenberg earlier on in his career, played in the Champions League as a young man at the uh, Bernabeu, former Norwegian international, of course. All these Norwich City players who start here today have played in the Premier League. It's a comparative rarity amongst the Middlesbrough ones, although they were hoping to change that today. They've got their work cut out. Acrobatically, and Daniel Bosson. I think at times when the balls are going into the Norwich penalty areas, a lot of Middlesbrough players just standing and watching, waiting for the ball to come their way. They've got to be on the move. You see it with Cameron Jerome, Bradley Johnson, Wes Hulan. They, they're making moves into the box, hoping and expecting the ball to come their way. They're not just standing on their heels and, and getting caught out. Patrick Bamford there is just waiting for the cross to land on his head, and that's not going to happen today. about the first 33 and a half minutes of this championship playoff final that'll please Alex Neal. But, uh, when you look at where the problems have lain recently and you can look back just as recently to the second leg against Ipswich, they started slowly. They started slowly at home against Middlesbrough and they last lost. They started in red-hot style here at Wembley. Well, I do think it all starts with the ascent of four, though, with Cameron Jerome. The way he works the, uh, the middles were back four. The way he won the ball back, got the opening goal in the game. It just gives the whole team a lift when you strike it. As your first line of defence, he's working that hard for you that you just want to get in behind and, and keep up the good work. The first goals are always important in any game. But in these championship playoff finals, you just look at the statistics down the years, 75% off the finals at this level, a one by the side that score first. Go back to Ian Holloway's black to with the last side to go behind here against Cardiff and come back to win. But they were never two goals down. You can see how frustrated Lee Tomlin is. He's getting no service on that left-hand side, so he's drifting in field just to get involved in the game. on uh, one of the more blatant handballs you'll ever see he claims he was pushed and that's why he did it I'm not sure anyone's going to buy that well, it's just a slightly awkward bounce and he seems to clearly misjudge it I think there is some contact on his back but certainly not enough to send his arm up in the air it's a clear handball just trying to kid the officials it's freestyle <laughs> well, the problem is you give away a cheap free kick like this with Grant Ledbetter and his quality and you could easily find yourself conceding out of what was effectively nothing, there could well be something in this for Middlesbrough. Steely gaze from Grant Ledbetter. Ruddy's come, gets decent distance on it. Michael Johnson up against George Friend. Friend has got beyond him. That's Whitaker on the cover. Yeah, you do feel in general play that Middlesbrough are struggling to really create any decent opportunities, but from set pieces, I think they have a chance, all they need is a bit of luck. They get the next goal in the game, it's very much game on. If they can get it before half-time, well, so much the better. Whitaker at the near post, and better will retake.
Rossen attacked it without any real gain. Well, it's very difficult when you're beyond the near post, really. Just got to try and help that on rather than score from there. First ever Spaniard to take charge of a playoff final. His first visit to Wembley for a game. He was here back in December for a disciplinary hearing. That was his only previous visit. Well, he has had an incredible effect on Middlesbrough over his reign of 18 months, but over seven or eight minutes goodbye, his side of 2-0 down. He has a monumental half-time team, uh, team talk to give. Nelson, coping well under pressure. Tetti Whitaker Redmond Olsen so I could leap to take him above right head but Ayala can clear A good quality possession from Norwich, leaving Middlesbrough chasing shadows. It's just the urgency that Norwich are playing with. You think they were behind, they're just playing one and two touch football, making Borough chase it. That's exactly what they should be doing at this stage of the game. A little early for the Olays from the Norwich fans, perhaps. But they are in command. Housen. Bradley Johnson. Redmond. good example of exactly how to do that just now I think when you keep the ball as well as they're doing you see players using their brains playing with a bit of flexibility players popping up in a variety of positions that's very hard then for Middlesbrough to get themselves organized Redmond's broken through the first tackle he's found Olsen Housen Bradley Johnson Clayton away as far as Housen well, you look how deep that Middlesbrough midfield is the distance between the, the Middlesbrough midfield and Patrick Bamford is enormous. Awesome. He's really enjoying his life down the left. Well, following us here today, live from Wembley, we have the Premier League season review from 5:30 right here on Sky Sports One. Well, again, you see that long forward ball played towards Patrick Bamford. He has no chance of winning that up against two solid centre halves like Bassong. And Martin, it's food and drink for them. They've got to be better than that, Middlesbrough. They usually are. But they haven't been allowed to be today, simple as that. Oh, we knew it was going to be a, a tight game. It's all about taking your opportunities when they come along. Working the opposition goalkeeper or sticking the ball in the back of the net. And Norwich have done that. Oh, 
enjoyed that extraordinary 30 seconds or so, didn't we, when uh, both sides hit the crossbar. That was inside the first 10 minutes. Since then, Norwich have taken a vice-like grip on this Skybed Championship playoff final. And they look in no mood to soften it. Once again, a complete waste. Patrick Bamford is showing down the line there, but just it's just a lack of understanding between Friend and Bamford. The ball is miles away from the centre forward. Again, they just give possession away cheaply. And Norwich will just take their time because they can do 2 0 up. Just take as long as you need. Barcelona really started this style of play with the two centre half splitting. Tetti will just sit in between them, the two full backs push on. And they have to be very good in possession to do that because if you lose the ball cheaply, that position could be at you. But they keep the ball really well, they've been brilliant. Norwich in this first half keeping hold of it. Redman. And takes it away from him. Tom Lane. Pockets picked by Whitaker. Well, the question is whether Norwich can keep this pace up because they've been brilliant with the ball, they're working tirelessly off it, not allowing Borough's key players to have any time and space to play, and it's been pretty much a perfect first half, Alex Neal. Martin haven't had a yellow card in this final yet, but uh, Mike Dean certainly wants to have a word with the Norwich captain. Well, it's the first time that Norwich have actually given the ball away. As I said, they do split their centre halves. Tetti goes and gets involved, but if you give the ball away, you're in danger. You don't want to give it away to Tomlin, and that's why I think Russell Martin knows what he's doing here, bringing him down. Final warning rather than the caution. He's played here at Wembley for Scotland. Yeah, I think if you don't book Adam Clayton, you can't book Russell Martin for that. And we've had a few of these set pieces in this first half, Middlesbrough, without any bearing much fruit. And Ledbetter to change that here. Straight down the throat of Tetty. Tomlin now. Nelson beats him to the punch. Element of risk as it was played back there to Ruddy, but. Uh, well away. <laughs> Two minutes of added time on the end of this first half. Whitehead plays it into the feet of Bamford. Clayton. Gibson. Friend. And some targets in the middle. Vossen and Bamford looking to provide those. Seems to be a spare man for Norwich, doesn't there? Wherever they are being challenged across the pitch. Well, you look in the wide areas, the combination of Redmond and Whitaker, Olsen and Johnson has been superb in this first half. It's not a new thing, is it? A wide man with a work ethic. Seen on this very pitch by uh, the likes of Bayern Munich uh, with Robbery and Reben. <laughs> Robin and Reber, even. <laughs> They can get you in a blur, those two down the flanks. I thought they'd signed two new players. <laughs> well, it's been that sort of an afternoon so far. And Middlesbrough goal, and it needs to be the next goal, can change everything.
Nelson straight out of play. Well, they've got into some dangerous areas, but the, the quality of the final ball in for Middlesbrough in this first half simply hasn't been good enough. On the page. Is that out of the Mourinho notebook, I wonder? We shall find out. By the way, it's certainly the biggest half-time team talk of his 18-month tenure at Middlesbrough. Can he breathe new life into his side? He needs to, because it has been a commanding first-half performance from the Canaries. Two goals in the space of three and a half, three and a half first half minutes. One from Cameron Jerome, one from Nathan Redmond. And the half-time scoreline at Wembley in the Championship playoff final, Middlesbrough nil, Norwich City 2. Simon. Well, there have been some real highs in the recent history over the last couple of decades of Middlesbrough. Some real lows as well after relegation, particularly in 2009. This was to be the return. It may still be, but they're going to have to cast their minds back to the glory days. The wafer cut run back in 2006. It took them all the way to the final under uh, Steve McLaren. That's the last time within any game that they've come from two goals down to win. He did it against Star uh, Bucharest, actually 3-0 down on aggregate at the time, you might remember. So the change of ensue, the only one. Norwich as they were in the first half, and now they'll certainly be looking for more of the same. If they can produce more of the same, well, they're back in the Premier League, simple as that. Well, and the message from my talker, Ranke, to his side will be, don't panic, we can get the next goal in the game, and then it will be game on. Sometimes you see it in many, many games, the half-time break doesn't do the side in the ascendancy any good at all. They want to continue playing, and that 15-minute break can slow you down, and I'm sure that's what Middlesbrough and their fans are hoping. Just three defeats and his 24 matches in charge coming into this one, Alex Neal. Houlihan surging onto that, couldn't get the power in the shot though. Well, this is why he's such a, a problem, he plays in between the lines and he just takes a chance and that ball is played up towards his centre forward, he just maybe expects the ball to break his way. Well, the biggest, not the strongest, but he got to that ball first. I just wonder Andy, looking at the Middlesbrough formation, whether they're looking to push Yelivos and Honor little bit more up to give more support to Patrick Bamford in the second half. Well, ideally, they'd want Boston as far forward as they can, but the, the quality of the, the forward balls in the first half was absolutely dreadful. Bamford couldn't get involved in the game, couldn't hold the ball up. If he does in the second half, and all those midfielders, yeah. Boston really primarily can go up and join him, but just the passing, the one and two touch passing, and, and the tempo of the game wasn't there in the first half. Bradley Johnson. There's a head injury, Mike Dean can't afford to take any chances here, just tries to flick this ball on, I think Johnson just takes a, a whack. Just trying to help it on down the line. Whether he actually gets caught by Insu or whether it's a Doma. 
just on the back of his head. Well, it's certainly not been a dull 12 months for Norwich City, has it? Relegated this time last year, they were top of the Skybet Championship table at the end of August, down to 11th by the end of November. It was actually an FA Cup tie that uh, spelt the end for Neil Adams and the arrival of Alex Neil from Scottish football. He's averaged well over two points a game since he's been in charge. Guided them to that East Anglian derby semi-final win and put them uh, their superb first performance in the driving seat here at Wembley this afternoon. The song rose highest. Housen. Coolahan. Johnson. James Flick. There's a feature of the first half, the wide players, Norwich wide players getting back, helping out their full-backs, Redmond doing it again there. Tom Lee. Clayton. And Sue. Adoma, the song net a block at the near post. For the first time in a long while, the Middlesbrough supporters house behind the goal that their side attack in this second half have something to get their teeth into. And there's great positioning though from Sebastian Bassong using all his experience. He wasn't worried about what was behind him, he's just worried about getting in the line of fire when that cross came in, in exactly the right place. Keep his header down. Well, this is why I'm not really a big fan of the away swinging corner because it's so hard for someone attacking the ball to get over the top of it. You know, if you swing that in towards John Ruddy and, and attack it, the pace is on the ball, but it's swinging away. You've got to generate all the, the power and the precision yourself. It's notoriously difficult. No doubt he's a talented player, Daniel Ayala. His spell at Norwich show very much uh, punctuated by injury. He did play a handful of games for them in the Premier League under Paul Lambert. Bosson. Going down under the challenge of Tetti, Mark Dean, not convinced by any claims for a foul there. Cameron Jerome. His leading from the front has been exemplary, it's set the tone for Norwich in many ways, hasn't it? Well, look what happens there, he chases the goalkeeper down, Constantopoulos lumps it forward and Norwich win the ball back, brilliant from Cameron Giroud. Whitaker. Well, I'm chasing that down, he might just have tweaked a hamstring, certainly holding it, not moving as well as he might. We talk about the strength of that Norwich squad that Alex Neal inherited. He's got Lewis Graben, Gary Hooper, ready-made replacements really for Cameron Jerome. Should he be? He's struggling as the second half wears on. Lewis Graben, who's available again after the three-match ban, he picked up for his red card against Rotherham. There's Bradley Johnson to Hulahan. Tetti. Bosson getting about Tetti. Well, this is what have to, has to happen, really, from a Borough perspective. They have to have more urgency when they haven't got the ball. They've got to put pressure on Norwich. They can't allow them comfortable possession. They saw what they can do in the first half. Offside flag up there against Cameron Jerome. Beaten to it by Basson. Now on the corner to Housen. They worked again. But, uh, the delivery from uh, Johnny Housen, not quite what he was looking for. 
Well, the opportunity on the counter-attack will be there for Norwich as Middlesbrough push forward, their full-backs will push on, they desperately need the next goal in the game, there's going to be spaces as Norwich counter. Adoma. Oh, it's dance beyond Bradley Johnson. Lawson. Now Tomlin. Here's George Friend. Halson with the block. Middlesbrough with the corner. Oh, they're finally starting to put some pressure on here. Middlesbrough, they're getting the ball into wide areas and starting to deliver. And any defence under that type of pressure eventually can crack. Bitter's corner. That was Ayala throwing himself towards it. He felt he was impeded, did he? Certainly Middlesbrough players all around Mike Dean. Well, the referee took his time and a good long look at this before he made his decision. A pretty clear view of it. Did it come off a Norwich player finally? I think he did. It comes off the song. It should be another corner. Bitter's touch, straight to Tati. Well, Tati's fired it into Bosson. All right, have it back through Friend here. Now the telegraph which allowed uh, Cameron Jerome to drop deep. This is Bradley Johnson, good recovery from Nsu. Now Adoma, Tati trying to make up the ground, but Adoma puts his foot on the gas. Adoma inviting ball, no one there to meet him. The chasing down by Bossom gets his reward. Yelly Bossom goes down cheaply. And he may well pick up a yellow card for simulation there. Well, the referee to me is absolutely right because Yellow Bossom, this ball's getting away from him. And I feel that he throws himself to the ground looking for a free kick, possibly a penalty. It is brilliant work for him originally. Is there any contact? No, there's not enough. There's not a foul in there. He makes it look like he's been fouled. He does get caught, but I think he does make a meal of it. In the end may not be particularly satisfactory for Yellow Bosson or for Middlesbrough, but uh, I can't remember a previous time that we had one of their players surging into the box like that, even you know, giving Norwich to think about. Well, what they're doing, Middlesbrough, is engaging Norwich higher up the field. It's a risk, because on the counter-attack, Norwich have players to, to hurt you, but at 2-0 down, you've got to do that. You've got to get red shirts in the opposition half now. Cameron Jerome now. To Hulan. Redmond. Ledbetter. Wilson, cross comes Passon. Well, we saw it previously with the Adoma cross, he reads the game so well, it's all down to experience, he knows where that pass is going. And make sure he gets there first, brilliant defending. Adoma looks much more in the mood in this second period, just out on this occasion, but he's taking players on. 
Yeah, but the Norwich defenders are just starting to stand off him a little bit as well in the first half. They're engaged in getting tight. They're not doing that now, and that's exactly what he wants. Friend. Now Tomlin. Led bit up. Odoma. Not by Besson. Gibson. Tomlin. In an area where he can create. Finds Bamford! Yeah, there's not quite enough purchase on the shot, but these are the types of areas that Middlesbrough need Patrick Bamford in, on the turn, on the edge of the box. Clever ball from Lee Tomlin. He you know he has the vision, the guile to pick out centre-forwards like that, but John Ruddy, it's a fairly comfortable save in the end, but this is better for Middlesbrough. Patrick Bamford, who had the briefest of tastes of the... Championship playoff final 12 months ago when he came off the bench for Derby as they chased it against Queen's Park Rangers in vain. He's been on the pitch since the start here, but has struggled to make a real impact on the game as Norwich at times have overrun the men in red. Over 40,000 have made the trip from Teesside down to North London today. Shell shocked at times in the first half, but getting more involved as more cut, more signs of encouragement are on display. There's still an awful lot to do, and there's now just half an hour in which to do it. Stretch Gibson hasn't quite got enough on that. Jerome will settle for the corner. Well, it is all down to nerves. Normally, the centre half should deal with this fairly comfortably because Cameron Jerome is not really that close to him. But he knows he's going to be put under pressure. He tries to take the ball down and he panics. And that's why Norwich have the corner. Not quite the Phil Jones header on the ground, but he was left flailing a little. So our mark, first Norwich City corner. Hands delivery, Konstantopoulos got a glove on it. Pass on. That'll be Middlesbrough ball. Is the strength and depth that uh, Scottish international Graham Dorans is uh, able to come up, signed uh, on loan from West Bromwich Albion, initially for a month, extended to include the playoffs. Uh, he's another one who's uh, been playing in the Premier League this season. Well, it's an indication that Alex Neal appreciates how much pressure his side are going to get put under here. It's a bit more conservative sending on Dorans, I presume, for either Houlihan or Halson. And he'll just sit alongside Tessie and just protect his back four. from Cameron Jerome. Back comes Ledbetter. Tomlin. And he was caught late down and that will be a yellow card for Johnny Housen. That is a clear foul again. They're just looking to get as tight as possible, not allow Tomlin to turn and play. Just clips his heels. And the referee absolutely right to book him for this. Cameron Jerome, you look at the performance of the two centre forwards today. He has absolutely bullied the two Middlesbrough centre halves, Cameron Jerome. When he's got the ball, he's a danger. When he hasn't got it, he closes them down. And Ayala and Gibson have had a very tough afternoon. One yellow card, a 
piece, Yellow Dawson for simulation, Johnny Housen for something altogether more straightforward. And Sue. Ledbetter. Hanford looked offside, didn't touch the ball anyway. Tomlin has worked it to George Friend. A song away. Oh, it's going to take something special to actually get past Sebastian Besson and Russell Martin, two very good headers of the ball, good communication, a really good centre-half pairing. Just those midfield runners for Middlesbrough, they've got to try and run in between those two. Redman. Hulahan. Redbit has wrestled it back for Middlesbrough. Ayala. Well, they have to be braver in possession for me, Middlesbrough, trying to get into wide areas, playing those straight balls towards Patrick Bamford. They just haven't worked out this afternoon. I keep saying these two centre-halves, Besson and Martin, very tough to break down. Kike, who scored an excellent goal in the uh, second leg against Brentford, has been sent out to warm up. He may be uh, not too far away from his first Wembley appearance. Brentford trying to get back at Whitaker, but the Scotsman prevails. There's been more of an even feel about this second half, but of course the damage is done in the first. Norwich doing exactly what they need to do, and that's largely keep Middlesbrough at bay. I think it's only natural when you tune a look the longer the game goes on, you're going to start to creep back into your own half. We expected a response from Middlesbrough, we've got that. Just the quality in the final third, we've just not seen it from Middlesbrough, they just need one opportunity to get back into the game, and, and the pressure will really be on for Norwich. System on the far side that uh, signalled against Yelevossen for a foul on Martin Olsen. A moment of magic, a uh, spark, a mistake, anything. Middlesbrough need it though. Norwich remain exactly where they want to be. Hulahan. So slippery. Housen. Redmond waited for it. Tomlin didn't. To Tomlin, to Adoma. And Steve Agnew, uh, who was here for the FA Cup final as assistant to Steve Bruce last season. And I took a rank as coaching staff, just uh, giving those final instructions to Kike before he comes on. Jerome 
Well, he's got a corner. Again, he's a thorn in the side of the usually dominant Middlesbrough defence. Well, he has been pretty much unplayable because Ben Gibson is clearly first to that ball, but Cameron Jerome just out sprints and keeps possession and wins a set piece. Brilliant work for his team. Rogelio Bossen, who will uh, make way for Kike. defend this corner but Redmond will clip in Constantopoulos well he was blocked off he couldn't get out that's what he's complaining about and it did represent a chance for Russell Martin and Norwich I'm not sure it was a foul but Johnny Housen he does he pins the goalkeeper on his goal line and to me he's actually stopping the keeper he's impeding the goalkeeper it should be a foul the referee didn't blow up that's exactly what Housen is there to do but for me that is a foul and if it goes in the back of the net it shouldn't count The timing has run well, all nearly getting there. And it's the first time, really, that that Norwich back four have been really caught out. Just one long straight ball. Russell Martin doesn't see Bamford running off his shoulder. He's a centre half, and the ball is travelling that far. You have to be aware of where the striker is. A better first touch, and he's round the goalkeeper. And we've seen him finish off chances from that sort of position. over the last three weeks and uh, it's probably maximum had three training sessions Patrick Bamford no matter how fit the player how fit can you be if you're on the sidelines unable to train and coming into a match like this well, that is the problem your injury might be fine but it's whether you've got it in the legs and the lungs to see the job through it's a vital 20 minutes 20 minutes really of Middlesbrough season left to salvage here Many Middlesbrough supporters would tell you it's not just the season, it's more than that after six years away from the Premier League. Here's Nsu. Now Kike, the deflection kindly there for John Ruddy and Norwich. Could have gone anywhere. But once again, Patrick Bamford is on his heels. Just watch him sink to the pitcher. He's waiting for the ball. He's got to get across Stephen Whitaker. Appreciate the Kike. He's only going to try and cross that ball from this position. The striker's got to make a move across defenders. He's too late when he eventually decides to make his run. finish line is in sight now for Norwich 20 minutes away from a return to the Premier League it's as simple as that they can start the countdown it's Middlesbrough look for urgency look for anything surprisingly when you look at the form the credentials of these two sides coming into this their uh, playoff semi-final dominance really against their respective opponents but uh, Norwich have found the going so easy here this afternoon. I don't think they found it easy, they've made it easy for themselves by playing quite brilliantly in the first half, that's when they, they did the job on Borough. And Graham Dorrance has been waiting in the wings for a while. He's ready to come on, but uh, he might be preceded by Lewis Graben. Gibson.
Kirkland gets his cross in. Bradley Johnson there to meet it. Now Adoma. Very compact defensive work from Norwich in that central area, isn't it? Well, they are sitting very deep. I don't think it is by design. Bivers were keeping the ball much better, but it's really just slightly tired legs. They're starting to sit that bit deeper. That's dangerous. Substitute uh, electronic board there, but it is Cameron Jerome will be coming on. He'll milk the applause of the Norwich City supporters and deservedly so. It's been some performance from him, and this is the goal, Andy, that set Norwich on their way. Well, Daniel Ayala simply bullied out of possession there. There's no one to pass to from Cameron Jerome, but he doesn't panic. He lets the goalkeeper make a mistake, showing the near post, and tucks it away. A crucial, crucial opening goal. So Lewis Graben, who's only had fleeting appearances because of injury or suspension recently, will come on and uh, try and see this one through for Norwich. And this perhaps is a substitution of consolidation with Dorans coming on to replace the more creatively minded Wes Houlihan. Well, we look at the quality in this Norwich squad, bringing on players like Lewis Graben and Graham Dorans. But you're right, Alex Tetty will now have a, a partner in there, two midfield enforcers to sit in front of the back four. For Norwich now, it's uh, what we have, we hold. Doma to Clayton. Brand, doing very well to keep that in. It's not exactly uh, helped the Middlesbrough forward momentum though. Redmond, friend needs to get back, whether he can is another matter. Dorrance. Awesome. Two former Leeds United players going at it and led bit up and find Tomlin. Here's Bamford. Kike's the man in the middle. Pass behind him. Hoisted out and away by Russell Martin. And so it's a substitute there, Graham Dorans all the way back on the edge of his own penalty area, appreciates the danger, and that's what he's been sent on to do. Anything that gets played across the face of the penalty area, make sure you're back there with the fresh legs, just clear your lines. Tetti, Housen. Whitaker. Not that from Whitaker through the legs of Bamford. Dorrance. Olsen. Tetty. Dorrance. Still Dorrance. Kike's challenge. Norwich have the free kick, and this is well in range. It's the first time we've really seen it in this second half. Norwich keeping the ball well. They've got very good technical players. They don't give it away cheaply. Doran's just releasing himself from that holding roll. Bursting forward, his ankle was clipped. And that's really a shot to nothing here. You can take this on in this type of range and have a pop. Redman 
Holland and Dorrance, the two who are exchanging views as to who should take that. Who has contributed three goals to the Norwich course since he arrived on loan. Redmond takes! Well, I'm not sure how close this was. The idea is absolutely right. Very difficult to get it up and over the wall, keep it on target with the pace that you need to score from this type of range. There's a fair distance away in the end, but worth a pop. so often on an occasion like this and it applies to so many different finals and so many different levels of the game you have one side that struggles to produce of their best when the pressure is on Norwich have been pretty close to theirs I think it would be fair to say Middlesbrough have fallen well short thus far I've seen Norwich play a number of occasions this season that first half of football was the finest I've seen from them with and without the ball as a manager. You can't ask for any more than that. He knows he's got a talented squad. He knows the pressure is on. You just trust them to put in a performance. And that first 45 minutes from Alex Neal's team was outstanding. That's why they are where they are within about 10 minutes of the Premier League. to Bradley Johnson, Ledbetter. Friend. Still George Friend. Cleared away by Olsen, appeals for handball. Tomlin takes it up. Couldn't get past the yellow and green wall. And here comes the Norwich City counter-attack, led by Housen. They're not in any hurry. They don't need to be in any hurry. Redmond. Clayton. Bamford. Adoma. Back to Patrick Bamford. Blocked by Russell Martin. And out by Graham Dorrance. And there's only been a couple of occasions where the Norwich back four have been caught ball watching. You can't afford to do that with Bamford. His movement is that good. Adoma. Pass on. Guarding the Norwich City near post. scored their two goals in under four minutes there's no reason why Middlesbrough can't do the same Ayala saw it blocked away back in by Clayton well, this is criminal from the Norwich City point of view no one even close to Daniel Ayala well, Lewis Graven does well he realises where this ball is going to end up off the head of Ayala and makes sure he's in the way, but this is a major opportunity. Said from set pieces, they have a chance, and Ayala maybe should have done better. Well, Norwich look like they will be ready for the Premier League next season. The season just gone, and the Premier League will be reviewed after we finish here. 5.30 Sky Sports 1. Here are the gentlemen preparing.
And this is one area where Ita Karanka will be desperately disappointed, not just the number of attempts, but just the one on target. I think with the attacking players that he has, he would expect much, much more than that. Besson, too powerful for Bamford. Now Graben. He's got the beating of pace for uh, Ayala, but uh, that's not the case on that occasion. Tomlin, Adoma, it's about six really at the moment for Norwich. Ledbetter, everywhere he looks, he sees yellow and green. Friend. Portman doing well, his friend uh, would appear to be the physically stronger. Well, Middles were trying hard, desperately hard to get it into wide areas within Sue and Friend, but absolutely right, the wide players for Norwich working back. Oh, done their attacking job today, really, it's just about seeing the job through defensively now. Bradley Johnson putting the pressure on Adoma. Bradley Johnson appealing for the foul throw, he might have had a case. Friend. Clayton. Friend. Bamford doing well to keep it alive. Bassong in the head of Adoma. Adoma, a judge to uh, foul the uh, camera in centre half. A slightly tired clearance here from Sebastian Bessong. He's had a great afternoon. Had a chance to put his foot through the ball, didn't take it. He was thankful to be nudged in the back there from Adoma. Norwich City were ready to make a change and uh, send on Gary O'Neill. Been something of a lucky playoff final talisman in that uh, although he was sent off here last season his uh, tackle was uh, generally perceived to be the key factor in stopping derby scoring and keeping queen's park rangers in the game at that point and with sebastian basson looking like he's okay the other goal scorer is withdrawn that was a brilliant finish but he's the beneficiary really from a formation that works so well tetty sitting in whittinger put whittinger Whittaker pushing on down the right-hand side, picking out Redmond, but his first touch just opened the angle up for him. Devastating finish, and when it went 2-0, he fancied it was going to be Norwich's day. Rather. We were hoping that uh, the tales of woe at the National Stadium would come to an end, what with uh, this being their first visit to it since it's been rebuilt, but it looks like it's more Wembley paying. New face in the dugout, that same old story, whether it be those FA Cup final defeats and subsequently the League Cup final defeats under Brian Robson. So Gibson, very much in command for those. Afternoon that promised so much, a season that promised so much for Middlesbrough, and they've fallen on the big stage agonizingly short. 
side that they had beaten and beaten handsomely twice this season. Haven't even conceded a goal against Norwich until today. But Alex Neil, comparative rookie manager, certainly in English football, came up with a plan, and it is a plan for Norwich that has worked to a T. Yeah, sometimes in football you win a 90-minute game by winning it in 45 minutes, and that's exactly what Norwich did with a brilliant first-half performance. It was blistering. Adoma. One of the things the Norwich City players say about the management style of Alex Neil is that he knows exactly what he wants us to do. He tells us we do it and it's all easy. He's not satisfied. You don't want that look, do you? I think you've got to appreciate That's probably why they do the job. Absolutely, but a 33-year-old manager walking into an experienced dressing room to win them over so quickly is very impressive. Clearly, his management skills are excellent and he's a really, really good coach and tactically, but absolutely spot on today. And he sets the bar high. And they fell out of the Premier League last season. The Norwich City supporters not sure, just as uh, is the case with all those sides relegated, how long it would be before they return. Looks like they will be one of those to make the immediate return and it has uh, been a far from easy process for them for Middlesbrough and the wait goes on and I think for the Middlesbrough fans they will have been surprised by the level of the Norwich performance in that first half but they'll be really disappointed by their own team's performance as well but again give credit to Norwich they work them very very hard when they haven't had the ball grab it Four added minutes now. They can reach out and touch it. Well, I think if you 1-0 up, four minutes could be an awful long time for a side that's leading, but when you're 2-0 up, you just have that little bit of an extra cushion. And you're so good in possession, you can just run the clock down here. That's what Alex Neal will be hoping his side can do. Well, collectively Norwich have been absolutely outstanding but individually Alex Tetti and Cameron Jerome for me have been head and shoulders the best individuals out there and his performance has been exceptional both what he's done when he's had the ball but what he allows the good players around him to do I talked about this formation him sitting in brings the best out of the, uh, the full backs they can get forward Houlihan can break forward he's such a good player as is Cameron Jerome Jimmy Constantopoulos in front of the Norwich celebrations that go on behind him. 
I think they really do have to appreciate the job that Alex Neal has done for Norwich City. At the start of the season, we knew they had a squad capable of challenging for promotion, but they were languishing for his arrival. What an inspiration that was to bring him to the club. He's galvanised them, he's brought the very best out of a talented bunch of players, and you'd have to say on what's happened today, they deserve to up to play in the Premier League next season. Housen. Bradley Johnson. Graben. O'Neill. Promoted by the playoffs with West Ham and Queen's Park Rangers this season. He's going to add Norwich to the collection. And ironically, Gary O'Neill, the last player to score a Premier League goal for Middlesbrough six years ago. Next one to do that, and well, that'll be a slightly longer wait. Norwich City bouncing back to the big time. The most astonishing of jobs has been done by Alex Neal since he took over in January. The little Scotsman who has made an enormous impact, and when Norwich City's season seemed to be going nowhere, he's guided them to third place, he's guided them through a very awkward East Anglian derby to Wembley. And in the biggest, the richest game in football, or so they call it, certainly the biggest in the Football League, his side have put on a performance of such class and composure, it's belied the magnitude of the occasion. Goals on the afternoon from Cameron Jerome and from Nathan Redmond, both coming in what was a blistering first half. Middlesbrough will be feeling sore as their long wait to return to the Premier League goes on. We'll have to admit, they have been beaten this afternoon by the better side. Oh, Norwich were simply fantastic. Their formation, their tactics absolutely spot on. And Alex Neal trusted some very experienced players to go out and do the job for him. In that first half, they were really there. They took the game to Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough had no real answer to it. They tried their best in their second half, but the quality wasn't there. It simply wasn't their day. But Norwich fully deserved to be playing in the Premier League. Brilliant. are about to explode and take on another dimension for Norwich City. It's an exclusive role of honour for them. Nathan Redmond and uh, Cameron Jerome scoring the goals. I suppose you'd have to say that Redmond got the winner. Bobby Zamora got his name on it last year for the second time. Kevin Phillips, Ricardo Vazte, Scott Sinclair's hat-trick. You think back through all those playoff finals that in their own way have produced such drama here today and it's the ultimate credit really to Norwich City's performance and the commanding nature of it that at no point really did they look flustered or concerned they made one of the biggest occasions in the Football League calendar look routine well it is it's about reaction when you don't go up in the top two it's can you react can you explode in the playoffs can you explode in the playoff final and Norwich certainly did that they were outstanding 
and they fully deserve to lift this trophy. It was a call as to whether Wes Hulahan would start today as he did at home at Carrow Road in the second semi-final. It was a bold call, it was the perfect call. He didn't put a foot wrong tactically today, did he? Alex Neal and Delia Smith and David McNally. Norwich chief executive Stephen Fry there as well, bathed in smiles in that director's box. It's a wonderful afternoon and it said every year, and that is because it's true, it is the most enchanting and wonderful way to go up. A season wrapped up in a cup final and you can celebrate because for the next 12 months you know what you'll be up to. You'll be heading to the likes of Old Trafford, the Etihad, to Stamford Bridge, the seat of the Premier League champions. But for the folk of Middlesbrough, it is heartbreak because you know all the work you've done. And there's been so much of it that has been so good. We're going to have to start again from scratch from the beginning of August. Well, you do get promoted as a squad. And really, simply put, you're struggling to find a Middlesbrough player who played well. Looking at Norwich, you're struggling to find a Norwich player who played badly. Across the board, to a man, they were fantastic. And it's great to see the squad coming together here. They fully appreciate it. It takes each other to get into this uh, position. They fully deserve it. Well, it's a squad that undoubtedly has talent, probably one of the best in the league, but to put the pieces together and to play when the demands are so high, to put in a performance in a final, well, it takes something special. And Alex Neal and Norwich City have been able to do just that today. Russell Martin, the Norwich City captain, ready to lift the trophy that signifies the return to the Premier League. A yellow brick road is paved back to the Premier League for Norwich City. The best of the rest join the top two in the top flight next season. A special performance from the 11 out on the pitch will mean a special night for the thousands that have followed them down here to North London from East Anglia. And the announcement of the arrival of a special managerial talent in the English game. Not many outside Scotland knew him at the start of the season, even the start of the year. Everyone will know him now. There's a Scott back in the top flight. First time for a long time that the Premier League season ended this year without a Scottish manager in it after the departure of Paul Lambert, the former Norwich manager, of course, from Aston Villa. Well, Alex Neal, a new name at the top table with a familiar one, Norwich City, 12 months after leaving the Premier League are back. Now that you do get a sense that he's a no-nonsense manager, he's a hard taskmaster, but some players need that. You need a manager to give you a kick up the backside, to push you on, and they simply weren't doing enough during the course of the season before he took over. Alex Neal arrives, he wins the squad over so quickly, and he gets the very best out of them. That's why they've been promoted. Such a wonderful array of talent, and what is the benefit from a Norwich City point of view is that they won't need to do massive rebuilding. It's a squad full of Premier League experience, courtesy of their three-year stay there. They, of course, will now have the resources to strengthen again. Delia Smith having a word with her mum, who sat just behind her. City make their way down and we can reflect further in the company of Simon Thomas on a wonderful afternoon's work for Norwich City.